All right. <clears throat> About to start our Acts chapter 5 study. Um, we're going to start with JP reading the first 11 verses. All right, go ahead, brother. It says here, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession and kept back part of the, of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto Elohim. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the spirit. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of Yahuwah? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the spirit, and the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the assembly and upon as many as heard these things. Hmm. This, is, uh, this is what a lot of people overlook when they, look, when they compare the New Testament to the Old Testament. Right. You know, they overlook the severity, the severity of of wickedness in the, in the, in the new Testament. What's going on, Kefa? So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you pull out what you see, anything you want to emphasize on. Um, <coughs> let us know. Yeah. I mean, just like you were saying right now, I think that's very shalom, important. Hebrews. Shalom. 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 Kefa. <laughs> uh, I think it's very important. You know, we, we get into the mindset, like I was speaking with one of my family members um, and, you know, everybody's in this, we're in a grace period of time. So now we're under grace and these things that happen in the Old Testament cannot happen to you today. And this is after the Messiah had already ascended. So that's when I had seen it like that. I was like, whoa, like they got struck down. Uh, I guess that's the way I would put it. And they were, they were, they fell down here, it says, and gave up the spirit. Like, so, and this is after that. So, so we can't play with, and I've been focusing on this lately. Like we can't play with God's grace and his mercy. We got to be more thankful because I mean, so, I mean, I, yeah, that's what, that's my only, uh, that's what I want to say about this that I think is very important. And um, I think also like is exactly what you're saying. The mindset. <clears throat> like right now you have uh we were just talking before we started the recording about diseases that's like right. spreading and we're thinking like this is just the way the world goes when it's when it's this is a punishment <laughs> this is this is a consequence of your action you know what i mean these are things that didn't exist years ago you know diseases that wasn't even heard of before is starting to to increase is starting to magnify their prescriptions for all these types of diseases is like you know magnifying and and we see that we don't we don't look at it like it's a punishment or it's a consequence for your action for moving against yeah we just look at it like this is just what happens and and it's like that's a that's an atheistic mindset you know, because it's just like, oh, this is just happening by chance, or just because it's happening, or it's a coincidence, or it just so happened to be. There's no involvement with God. There's no involvement with anything else besides 
you know, a consequence. And I think that right here it shows us like the things that we do will be met. It will be dealt with by Yah. Yah will address all the things that we do. Um, but the funny thing that I wanted to point out, I wanted to point out what what I what I think. Kefa, you, we're on uh, Acts chapter five. Uh, we're breaking down verses one to eleven when um, Ananias and Sapphira died for holding back some of the proceeds of selling their their um, selling their uh, their possession. That's a hard one, right? There. That's a hard one, right there. Oh yeah, even right there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. But one thing I found out when I was doing a study on um, uh, in Leviticus, and I found this this verse, and I'm going to go to it now. It's in, um, I think it's Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Oh, give me one second. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Leviticus 27. I was wondering where you was going on Leviticus 23. <laughs> yeah, it's the feast. I guess we got to start talking about the feast. <laughs> All right, verse, I'm looking at verse 28. So Leviticus 27. <clears throat> Verse 28, and it says, Notwithstanding no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto Yah, of all that he has, both man, beast, field of his possession. I'm sorry, give me one second. I'm going to eat food already, okay? Or of the field of his possession. shall be sold or taken back. Every dedicated thing is most set apart unto Yahuwah. So uh, I, I broke it down a little bit. Uh, I was broken up a little bit. Let me read it again. Uh, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 28. It says, Notwithstanding no dedicated thing that a man shall dedicate unto Yah, of all that he has, both man, both beast, both field of his possession, shall be sold or taken back. Every dedicated thing is most set apart unto Yahuwah. This means that if you take, if you have a person, like if you say, I'm going to dedicate my child, you can't now de dedicate your child to do something else. Your child now is dedicated for the purposes of Yah. We see that with Samuel, with the, Samuel's mother, we see that with uh, the man that said, whatever comes through, I'm going to sacrifice whatever comes through the door. And then his wife and then his daughter came in and he had to dedicate his wife to the temple, to the temple services um, for, for the rest of her life. She couldn't get married. And now it also says for the field of his possession. If you take the field of your possession, you do dedicate it to Yah. It says that it, you cannot take it and sell it and you cannot redeem it or take it back. Because it is now most set apart unto Yahuwah. So when I when I was looking at this, it right away in my mind it connected to to Ananias and Sapphira, because most people are like, "What in the world?" They, they this is what they did um, uh, in verse three, <clears throat> in verse three of Acts chapter five. It says. And Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled your heart to lie to the set-apart spirit, to the Ruach HaKadosh, and to keep back of the price of the land? To keep back of the price of the land. We just read that whatever is, even if you have a possession and you sell it, it is most holy, most set-apart to Yah. <clears throat> so this is what he's breaking. He's breaking the Torah. He dedicated it. He, he made an oath with his lips saying, this is for Yah. And now he's keeping part of it for himself. And then Peter is like making a clear, a clear statement in verse four. 
while it remained, was it not your own? After it was sold, was it not in your own power? You didn't have to dedicate everything to Yah. You could have dedicated whatever you wanted to dedicate. And it would have been received. But you dedicated the whole thing. And, and to go into the motive of why, I mean, of course, the root of it would be pride, but it would be speculation. We don't know half what was in his mind, what, was he, what he was trying to accomplish by saying, here's everything that I have and still keep back some of the stuff for himself. You know, um, you see what I'm saying? Verse, verse four, it says, why did you conceive this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men. You're not doing this to us. Right. You know? And I was, and I was also thinking like, with that being said is, you know, it, it just started coming to me like today, you know, in our, in our time, like when we surrender our lives to Yah and we start to say, well, this is what I, this is, I'm like, like, like I've been saying, like I'm clocked in, I'm not going to just start, I'm not going to change up. And it seems as like it says in verse four that they, uh, oh no, in verse three, it says they lied to the Holy Spirit. They lied to the Spirit of Yah. Like they lied to Him. And they were thinking they were getting over on the people. And it's the same thing with us. Like we we can go and lie to the people, but we can't lie to Him. Like, because He knows our heart, He knows every our whole intention. So, so I don't know, something in my mind was, yeah. was thinking in that sense of when we give up our, our life and we're surrendering. And there's that final, because it felt like for me, it was like time after time. And then also there was this final time in my life. It was like, I'm, sur I'm done. Like, this is my surrender. I'm, I tried to fight it, and now I'm here. So I can't, yeah. you know, I can't go back. It's like, it's like the power of the tongue. You know, the power of the tongue. The words hold power. And right. it takes me back to Matthew chapter 7, I believe. Okay, let me share Matthew chapter 7 for a second. It's funny, I was reading that yesterday. <clears throat> uh, uh, give me a second. Is it Matthew chapter 7? Give me a second. Give me a second. Oh my goodness. A little step scripture that talks about later yes be yes and you know be no. Um, I think it's Matthew chapter 5. Oh, 5, right? <clears throat> I think it's Matthew chapter 5. Let your yay be yay. Anything other than this is, yeah. Uh, Matthew yeah, 5. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Matthew 5 verse um, <clears throat> 37. Yeah, I got you. Um, 33. 33. Um, again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time. Thou, thou not shalt forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto Yahweh thou oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is Yah's throne. So to me, it, took, it really took me back to that scripture when I was reading the other day, how the importance of how the way we use our words, it holds a lot of weight, you know, when it comes to Yah. When we're going to say something, he's actually going to keep us accountable to it. Right. And if we don't live up to it, he's still going to remind you of it. That's how serious it is. So it really took me back to that scripture. Right. I want to kind of, there's a verse I'm trying to, uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. <clears throat> the connection with what you were saying, Kef. It says, um, but I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words, you shall be justified, and by your words, you shall be condemned. Wow. So when you make an oath or you make a decision, this is not something where you have to say the word oath in order for it to activate as an oath. That's not, that's not what Yah is saying. Yah is saying that when you speak and say that you're going to do something, that this is what he's now holding to you. And you will be held accountable for that which you spoke. And um, 
this is this and again just constantly raising that calling raising that bar that standard you know what i mean of even your own words that's why when we talk about the shabbat and we're like we shouldn't be speaking our own words this is now we have to realize the importance especially on the shabbat of where we need to be in control of, of how we need to be in control of our mind of our lips and of our actions you know what i mean so now you have this man and this woman both planning together to keep back what they've spoken and devoted, you know, dedicated to Yah together. You know what I mean? And then I guess trying to manipulate, <clears throat> manipulate how people looked at them or whatever it was. All I know is, is that, judgment came for them at that moment, the moment that they made that decision or the moment that they confirmed. And I like what, what um, JP, you brought out that it said that you didn't, that they didn't lie to <coughs> men, that they lied <coughs> to the Ruach, to the spirit. And when you lie to the spirit, that means that inside, inside of your mind, right? You have this conviction. When you receive the Ruach, right now, these are believers. They received the Messiah. They accepted the, they received the gift of the Ruach. So they have the spirit in them, right, that they received as a gift. And they're going against what the spirit is telling them to do inside of them. And Yah is making it known to Peter, saying, you think that you're doing this to men? You're not doing this to men. You're doing this to Elohim. You're doing it to him. Because he's already come, he's already trying to lead you inside of your own heart, in your own mind. And you are you are still going against that conviction in order to deceive Yah's people. And and he wasn't having it. And you saw the mercy. He tried to give his wife an opportunity to do what Yah was convicting him of. See, one thing that I know about Yah is that he's he's not just going to punish you without convicting you of the truth like you have to be he's gonna let you know and you're gonna have to fully reject it right. and this is what was happening in their hearts they were fully rejecting it so peter said you're not lying to us you're lying to that spirit that was given to you the spirit was given to you when you accepted messiah and you decided to ignore what the spirit was telling you to do um yeah, no, I mean, and just wanted to add, you know, I, you know, also what I was thinking about is here in verse four, again, he says, while as it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? You know, like he, it was, it's interesting because I started thinking about when we have something as a possession, as money clothes or whatever we have and then we see somebody who's in need of it you don't give and then you don't be like hey uh you know what i'm saying two weeks later yo you got that twenty dollars i let you i gave you no you just give and let it go because when it was yours it was yours but when this the moment you thought about it and you said man maybe i this man needs some he needs a little bit of money so he can buy himself his family some food you gave and now it's not yours no more. It was through that ruach that was in you that pushed you to give. And now right. it's not yours no more. And so, I mean, that's one of those things. And, and then here, this verse, Matthew, I don't know if it pertains. I, I feel like it does. But Matthew seven eleven it says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give, you, give good things to them that ask for him? So in the same sense of, he's he was gonna probably bless these people. I don't know, you know. I'm not really. I can't really say that. But it's like when we give, like he's gonna take care of us. I feel like you know. I don't know. That's just maybe that's just my mentality. You know what I mean? No, that's but, no, that's that that's that's bib that's scriptural. That's yeah. that's what he says. He says anybody anybody who gives. What did he say? He says anybody who gives up. All of the things that they have, it shall be returned to them hundredfold. You know, uh, you know. So we need to realize that that the things that we possess, if we're giving it to him, we don't have to regret it. We don't have to look back at it and be like, oh man, 
you know, maybe I should have kept that for myself. Even when it comes to tithe, like uh, when they was given a tithe, they had to, they had to give a certain amount, right, of what they had. What they had was blessed by him. So ten, the tenth was already his. It wasn't like, <clears throat> like okay, I'm going to choose which ones. No, the tenth was already his. And then it says, if you took it back, you had to give it back and add a fifth part to it. It's, it's just like when you steal, uh, when you look at the judgments and the statutes for stealing, you're supposed to give it back and you're supposed to give back four times or five times, something like that, back to the person. So it's like you're, you're literally stealing when you, when you say it's yours and then you take it back for yourself. And it's, right. it's not a light thing. It's not a light thing. There's a lot of things in, in the, in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament that it's, it's very severe, the consequences of it, you know. Uh, I'm not going to go to it, uh, but, you know, even 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when it talks about um, the Master's Supper. And it talks about taking it unworthily. And then it says, because many people take it unworthily, that many people are sick and dying, you know, in the assembly. You know, so yeah. he's something like the master's supper, the bread and the wine, you know, to take it as a as a ceremonial display of, of worship, to take it as a as a memorial to remember what the Messiah did on our behalf, you know, that to take that lightly is to take your own salvation lightly. You know what I mean? So now you have a situation where you guys are running from the Romans, you running from the Yahudim, the Jews, and everybody's coming together right now to, to build what Yah wants them to build. And then you come in, you and you you manipulate your sales you keep back some and you say look this is everything you know yah's going to come back hey nah leviticus 27 i told you whatever is dedicated to me is most holy to yah you know All right what do you guys think I strongly agree. I think it's a serious thing because a lot of time we think about it like we like, man, you know, this is the New Testament and we don't need to do that anymore for many people. Like, you know, that's nah. But the reality is that we still are holding to that, that same standard, that same principle. Um, you know, when it comes to giving to Yah, you know, we have to be committed that Yah has given us plenty. He has given us more than we can ever give. So the reality is we have to take that serious to know that, you know, there are things that Yah called us, Yah give us a, a calling to do when it comes to um, the way we need to perform ourselves as, you know, the temple of Yah, when it comes to giving. Um, many, many ways, you know what I'm saying? Just all of us, like our whole self, with his mind, with his heart, with his you know, taking care of the poor, whatever it is, you know, we need to give, we need to make sure that we set aside the things that we ought to do for Yahuwah. Um, <clears throat> whether it's tithing, whether it's giving, you know, it's a serious thing because as you see it, you know, they took, you look at Sephora and eyes in Sephora, you know, you in their hearts, they probably thought, you know, they were doing what was right, but their hearts was in the right, in the wrong place. They were doing it for man, but Yah doesn't want us to live like that. Yah doesn't want us to be able to please man, but to please him. And whatever it is for him, and is and you made that oath or you made that that you know that commitment to him, it's between you and him. And no man can no man have to know that. It's between you and him. And we have to you know, we have to keep that serious. So <clears throat> I, I, I agree with that, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And just, and just to retract, you know, a little bit back to the end of chapter four, what we've seen was that they were selling all their stuff, you know what I mean, and bringing it together in one common, as they said, it's all common, it's all ours, like together, and then they started giving out to those who would need, and, and, and it seemed like it, certain amounts were given here, certain amounts were given here, 
so you know this is just following up on chapter from chap the end of chapter four so the people were seeing that we're coming together as one assembly as one people selling all our stuff you know what i'm saying and again you know i keep on going i'm seeing it again you know in matthew uh what are we in uh, matthew chapter 6 verse 30 it says wherefore if, if elohim so clothe the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe you oh you have little faith but i mean here we're seeing the same thing you know it's like Elohim will clothe you, take care of you, and he shows what he's doing here in, in the end of chapter four. He's like, everybody's seeing these miracles, and it's like, and all of a sudden, for some reason, Ananias and Sapphira just said, Hey, we're gonna we're gonna try to scheme on this. And they went and they sold all their stuff. Obviously, they sold it. So they did the first half of the agreement in a sense, and then they just and, and it seemed like they just got hit with Satan's temptation and they fell. And, right. you know, not even, even though you got, you know, what, what the scriptures say, you know, so it's just amazing. But I mean, that just goes to show for us today, you know, the same thing. Like we got to be always on guard, you know? Right. Right. Definitely. All right. So let's look at, um, Let's look at the next uh, 11 verses. So we did the first 11 verses. Let's look at verse 12 to 22. I'm going to take, I'm going to, Kefa, you mind taking that one? Verse sure, 12. sure. Um, <clears throat> by the hands, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders, what among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, Thus, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnify themselves, them, <clears throat> magnify them. And believers, were the, and believers were the more added to the masses multitudes, both man and woman. <clears throat> and as much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that all the leaves, the shadows of Peter's passing, by might foreshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities ran about into Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them with, were vexed with unclean spirits, and they will heal everyone. To what verse? Uh, 20, like 22 or... Okay. Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him is the set of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angels of Yah by the night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak into the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught but, and taught, but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the consuls together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. That's, the, good. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Whew. Again, that's what do you lot. see there? What you see there, uh, Kef? Uh, what do you want to uh, see Well, the one that was really, um, that was powerful to me was verse 15. That was like, wow, because it says, um, and as much as they were brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that of the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them, might, might overshadow some of them. So to me, it was like, wait a second. This is, this is careful. They bring in the, you know, they're bringing the sick, all them out. And they have so much faith that even if, 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 if you look at Peter, who was an, it was an apostle, of course he can heal them. But they have faith that by his shadow alone, that it will be healed. It kind of reminds me of um, Shaul with the anchor ship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to me, it was like, wow, that's, that's, that's tremendous faith right there. That's like, wow. You know what I'm saying? To know that 
Kepha, an apostle who was full of the Holy Spirit, many believed that he was going to be able to heal them just by his shadow. I mean, that's unheard. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that was powerful. <clears throat> that was very powerful. That, yeah, definitely. That, these are the type of things that I, 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 sometimes when we talk about the miracles and we do, I don't think that we're really emphasizing on the right thing. You know, when we'd be like, oh, hey, how come the miracles are not happening like it was in Acts? Well, how come the faith is not being executed the way that the faith was in the book of Acts? You see what I'm saying? Like, these are men who, who they believe. They said, I'm going to get healed if Peter just walks by and his shadow touches me. You see, the hem of the garment. You see what I'm saying? Like, where's the faith? I mean, remember with Messiah, that's what he used to always say. I have not seen so much this faith in all Israel. You see what I'm saying? So he's telling us, I don't see faith in Israel. <laughs> I don't see faith there. I'm going, I see this Roman soldier with faith. I see this, this woman with faith. I, I don't see no faith in Israel. You see what I'm saying? So when we ask, how come all these things is not happening? Yeah, how come we're not having the faith? That puts us on the spot. Sure. You know, that, that, that moves the blame off of these, these churches and denominations. That puts the blame right back on us. Because if we had that faith, then it would be happening. So... We need to self-examine. We go back to the self-examination. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing that's hindering Yah from pouring out what he wants to pour out? Um, I think that he does want to pour out collectively, but I don't think that he would restrain himself if he saw a few ready to receive. You know what I mean? So we got to... We got to keep that lens. We got to keep that spotlight on ourselves. Like, forget about what the churches are doing. How, what are we doing? How come we're not doing that? You know, how come we don't believe that as much as they believed? Um, but that is a crazy, uh, that's a crazy demonstration of faith. Though. Yeah. yeah. What you see, JP? I was already, I was seeing the same thing with the woman and I went to Matthew chapter nine, verse 20, where it says, and behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. So it was like a same, it was like this, she just touched the hem of his garment, you know, it says here in 21, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Right. But Yahushua turned him about and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So, like, I, I mean, I agree with what's being said is that, you know, the faith of these people made them whole, made them healed. You know, a person can go in and get their hands, you know, someone lay their hands on them. But if they don't have the faith, they ain't going to get healed. You know, so it's just amazing when we speak about that because you start thinking about today and, you know, I've, I've asked myself that same question. I say, if this guy can heal people, why don't we go to all these hospitals and start healing people? But the truth is, the person in the hospital needs to have faith to be healed. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Absolutely. I believe that it can still happen today. Right. They can. I've seen it, and I've seen it, and I've seen it. In my, I've seen it in my life. Um, I think it's a matter of activating it. I think it's a matter of of making sure, like you know, Jadiel was saying, you know, looking at yourself. You know, what I'm saying because the reality is that we constantly need to look at ourselves to see what's what's on, you know, what is hindering us from from reaching that place, yeah. from reaching that level of faith, because there's always got to be something in us right. that's preventing that place. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why the that's why it's very important that we teach because it's faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's like 
we have to make sure that people understand what they have faith in, what they need to have faith in. The, the word has to be accurate. It has to be exactly what Yah is telling them to believe. You see what I'm saying? Before they can receive that healing. You can't just be believing, you know, there's a level of mercy that Yah does have. But when you want to see miracles like this, there has to be, there has to be an accuracy on what you ha what they have faith in. You know what I mean? And I, um, I mean, of course, you have Peter and them is in the area. It it was not without teaching. Matter of fact, it says in verse twenty that the angels came, opened up the doors, and told them to go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of life. You see what I'm saying? So. Uh, that's in Acts 5.20. So they they had to deliver an accurate understanding of the gospel. And when they understood the accurate understanding of the gospel, they placed their faith on the Messiah. They placed their faith on Yah and the ability that he had, not only to raise his son from the dead, but also to heal them as well. You know, so... This is bringing us, bringing us deeper into what what our position is right now. I just wanted, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, JP. I looked up the word "fence" two hundred thirty-one verses, so I had to find the one. Some of them that I was like, but here's a good one. I mean, talking about faith, you know, uh, fourteen Acts fourteen verse eight. It says, and there sat a certain man at Lystra impotent to his in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never had walked the same heard paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed wow like and that's exactly what we're talking about he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand up right in thy feet and he leaped up and walked so that's that was just kind of an example i, I just want to throw out there Absolutely. Matter of fact, you guys remember when Messiah went to Nazareth and he could not heal because of their lack of faith. You know, mm -hmm. um, if you guys know where that verse is, but it says that he went and he could not do miracles there because of their lack of faith. And the Messiah, the Messiah could not do the, the, let me, let me, let me look for it because that's kind of a big statement. Give me one second. Nah, I'll find it later. I don't want to take too much time. Yeah, so he saw that they believed and they were healed. The doors were open and he told them to go. The angels told him to go stand in the temple and speak the words of this life. Verse 20, Acts 5, <laughs> the words of this life. Wow. I think that's very important because it's a, you see what I'm saying? Like we're studying the scriptures, right? When we, I, this is what I believe. I believe when we understand it from the, from the spirit, when the spirit gives us the accurate understanding, that's when our faith activates it, activates the promise. You see what I'm saying? Um, when we not only faith in in what's being said but also when we apply it to our life the accurate understanding of his word you know so the importance that he shows go speak in a temple to, to all the people you see what i'm saying that there's definitely like what we're doing now we need to make sure that we don't lessen the importance of what we're doing right now studying the scriptures trying to understand it asking yeah, to give us his spirit, to give us this wisdom, 
that will that when we apply faith to it, it activates and brings power. You see what I'm saying? So we need to make sure. What I've been noticing is that everybody, this is what I've been hearing back in the days. Like, oh, this is what people say. Um, um, you don't have to speak all the time. Your life is a, what do they say? Your life um, is the gospel or they they listen to your life more than they listen to your words. Yeah, to me, to me, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. Here's why. If I'm doing something in my actions, you can only understand why I'm doing it if I explain to you why. I can, you can only understand what's motivating me if I tell you who's, who's giving me this strength to do it. You know what I mean? And on top of that, you cannot develop faith by me giving you a sandwich. Yeah. You don't develop faith by me giving you some food. You develop faith by hearing the word. That's what the scripture says. Faith comes by hearing. Right. If somebody's just giving a sandwich and not giving the word, you yeah. just you just cut that thing in half. You just dissected the gospel and gave whatever you wanted to give. And that's what's been happening. This has been a theme. Oh, just let your action speak. Oh, don't say nothing. Don't 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 put your religion in their face. Just just do good things for them. Just bless them and help them. That's what I've been hearing for years. It was foolish, foolish to try to negate speaking to the person you're helping to, to to just only focus on actions and works. That's a works based. Uh, <laughs> uh, mission that's a works based mission i'm trying to give food but i'm not trying to give the word no the scripture says to do both in word and in deed that we're supposed to glorify yah you know what i mean wow. there's no negating either one both is a necessity and they work hand in hand you know for me to remove one is for it to to have an incomplete gospel with no power you know yeah no, that makes sense. Hallelujah. Um, just to throw the verse that I, I, I believe this is the one that we were talking about earlier about faith. Um, 1358. Uh, there's one portion, Matthew 1358. He says at the end of that chapter 13, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Right. Then you got another one in 6.6 six of Mark, Mark 6.6, six, where it says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. So, and then he says, and he went round about the villages teaching, but, you know, again, just these times of like, like you're saying, the Messiah wasn't even, he's not healing. I mean, here in Mark 6, 6, it says, um, it says, let me just say this though. It says in verse five, and he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid hands upon a few six folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. So here, you know, I mean, can you believe, man, the, un the lack of faith, you know, but it said that he marveled. All right. Let's think about right. marveling. Right. <laughs> when you marvel, when you right. marvel, right. It means that you're in awe. Right. Like you're in like, you're right. astonished. So imagine Messiah is like, I can't believe you don't believe. Like, I'm, yeah. I can't believe you don't believe, you know? And you know, it's funny, like there's, there's times when I feel like that. Like sometimes I'm just like, I don't understand. I don't understand and I'm, I'm glad I don't understand because I don't want to understand me not believing when it's crystal clear. Even when the Messiah is like, come on, you ain't getting no excuses. If the yeah. Messiah is like, I, I can't. I don't. I can't believe you don't believe. If the Messiah is doing it, I can't see that there's any excuses for them. You know what I mean? So it's like that's why I'm always looking at myself because there's no way I'm gonna be hear a conviction and be like, nah. Like still get rid of the thought. Like nah, I don't even want to entertain 
the, uh, the, the possibility of Yah being real and his word having power and him making promises to me and this world being set up to destroy me and hate me. You know, I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to fathom that thought. Like to me, I can't even, I can't even understand why people would choose that. Cause it's a choice that those verses that you read just showed that a lot of people chose not to believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is not something where you just tell them the truth and then they're going to be like, Oh snap. Oh wow. That hit me hard. I'm a believe now. Like, no, they still have to choose to receive it from you or to deny it. And that's the sad part. I know a lot of us wish, I know I wish there's times when I wish that I can just say the truth and it will, it will affect them in the positive way. But the only thing that I can do is speak the truth and it will convict them. And then they still have to choose to obey the conviction or to deny the conviction, you know? And, man, and you know what, just kind of what you're talking about as I was looking still at this chapter 13 of Matthew, what was happening before he said that it was, it says here in um, 53, just starting in 53, it says, and it came to pass that when Yahushua had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. So now he's teaching in their synagogue. <laughs> in so much that they were astonished and said, they're astonished. And they still said, whence have this man, this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Is it, and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence they then have this man and all these things. And they were offended in him. But Yahushua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own his house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. But they, they, seen, they seen the power of Yah. And they still questioned the man. And they said, this still makes sense. You know, we know this person. Instead of just believing in the power of God. Exactly. You know? And that's what we're going through now. They're looking at us as if it's coming from us. Right. It's not coming from us. So you don't have to look at me. And I don't have to point you to me. I need to point you to the one, you know, to Messiah. I need to point you to Yah. You know, so we also, so we see in this, this happening, right? Where the, the faith of the people is growing. People are flowing into the assembly of Yah. Angels opening up the prisons. You know, the, the leaders are getting upset, throwing them in jail. Angels opening up the prison, telling them, go ahead and speak again. Go to the temple and keep on yeah. telling them. Keep on telling them the truth, you know. To me, that... I just got two. That's pretty really powerful, man, because it's like, it's like, listen, I care for you. God got you out the prison. Don't worry about what happened. Get out. Boom. Go preach the word. Don't worry about it, man. Just do what you got to do, right. regardless of what they do to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's, to me, that's amazing. You know, that's amazing. The power of Yah and how he's not concerned about, man, he's, he's concerned about getting things done for his kingdom. Right. He's concerned about his word being spread across, you know what I'm saying? He has no respect of men. So it's, it just, it's just a wonderful thing how it's like when we, when that was happening, because the truth is, you know, that, that assembly in Acts, in, in Acts, in the book of Acts, has so much faith, you know what I'm saying? So the angels was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to partake in this. I'm going to minister them because they're working, in the, they're working in the presence of Yah. They're working in the Holy Spirit. And it's the same thing with us. When we... When we, uh, what's the word for it? When we tag into the Holy Spirit, when we tag into the word of Yah, when we have faith, literally the angels would have ministered to us right around us. Absolutely. And, and this is why to me, prayer, faith, fasting, all these things, being doers of the words, all these things combined is where Yah is going to be able to lift up his people and make things happen. Absolutely. And I think it's, um, it's powerful to know that, um, it just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's, beautiful. No, it's absolutely, you're absolutely right. I was gonna mention that, like to think, like Yah is sending you, go teach the word. 
you know, angels right there beside you to help with all the other things that you have no power to, 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 you can't open up the gates in, in the jail yourself, but then you have Yah sending these angels, go ahead. He has a work, you have a work. And then the angels and us working together to complete the task that Yah has for us. To me, that's, that, man, I want to go now. I want to, <laughs> I want to do this now. <laughs> but I understand there's, there's a growth, there's a maturity, there's a preliminary time period where, you know, we need to. The the, the apostles had that with Yahusha. You know, even even Paul had that. You know, he waited three years before he started preaching, and then he went and spent like fifteen days with Peter, James, and John. You know what I mean? Like he, we all Moses. He went forty years. Then he got sent back. You know what I mean? We all need that that time period to spend with Yah, with Yahusha, you know, at his word, you know, receiving the Ruach, submitting and surrendering the things that's inside of us, telling Yah to search in us and reveal to us the things that's hindering us from receiving this power, you know, from receiving this understanding of your word so we can teach the word and 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 allow people to receive the faith that that you want them to have, you know what I mean? And it's there. So, man. It's there. It's there, man. We, oh, my goodness, man. It's yeah. There. It's there. You know, I remember one time, I want to share this. Mm. I one time when I was, um, I was going through this, these changes in my life, uh, when I was getting to this understanding um, of being an Israelite and um, keeping the commandments, and I remember digesting the word and, and the more it's like the rule which just like constantly pushing me to digest the word that eventually I was filled with the rule. Literally, I was filled with the rule to the point that it's that to the point where it's like I just wanted to do Yah's will. And I could not I wasn't able I remember one time when I went to the train. I was in a train on New York in New York City. And I was sitting down. I was sitting in the train and all of a sudden I felt the I felt the Rua told me. The Rua told me, get up speak literally i heard it in my voice like i heard it in my ears it said get up careful speak and i was not able to contain my tongue i know you guys probably went through that you know that experience it's like i was not able to contain my tongue tongue it's like i wanted to contain it but i couldn't this is what happens when you feel by the presence of yahuwah Absolutely. it's like it just push you to a level of just your flesh is counts for nothing. They just push you to a level of places that you will not be able to reach. And I want to reach that again because I, I remember how it felt. It felt like you were the only man in the world for Yahuwah. And no matter what people said, no matter, you were just blind to what people said about you. You were just blind to what people thought about you. You didn't care how you look. You just wanted to please Yah. And that's where... Yah want us to go. Absolutely. And that is, to me, that is the most wonderful, beautiful feeling. It is. That presence. But like I said, it takes, you know, you got to just constantly, you know, <clears throat> little by little, you know what I'm saying, and work on yourself. Right. It's Absolutely. Beautiful. I just want to share that. No, no, definitely. Definitely. It reminded me when I was preaching in um, trains in New York, man, that experience you know what I'm talking about. That experience is is not a it's not a normal experience. Like it's that experience builds something inside of you. You know what I mean? And it definitely all the people that I did it with, it did I could see the difference in all of them that did it with me. You know. Um and it wasn't even like a church thing. This is just what we did. I'm wow. talking about I was I was we, we was I was at my boy's house. We yeah. all be we all became, you know, believers. And we were just like, yo, it's 11 o'clock. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let's go to the train and let's preach. That's how it was. That's yeah. how it was, man. It was, it was crazy. It was not crazy. a church thing, man. It was just you. You and the Ruah. Yeah. So praise y'all. Let's, uh, let, me get, let me get to uh, Acts 5, verse 23. I'm going to read verse 23 to 33. All right? It says in verse 23, saying, the prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keepers standing without the, before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within, 
Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. So they felt, they, I guess they felt, uh, they felt troubled that it was going to blow up now. Then came one of them and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain of the officers and brought them without violence, because they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we immediately command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey Elohim rather than men. This is the second time he's saying this. And the Elohim of our fathers raised up Yahushua, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him have Elohim exalted with his right hand to be a prince. They go to distinction again. <laughs> be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. I like how you said repentance to Israel. Yeah. So you know, at, at this point, you have, uh, you have, uh, you know, he's, he's appealing to them. He's appealing to them. You don't see anybody going to the Gentiles yet. Cause remember the, 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 they needed to appeal to the, to the, to Israel and then to the nations. So he's like, they're trying to give, he's trying to give repentance and forgiveness of sins. Verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Ruach HaKadosh whom Elohim have given to them that obey, obey him. Mm. Verse 33. When they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to kill them. That's crazy. That's crazy. So. A lot in there. It's a lot in there. Yeah. With looking at this, I see, I see the, the politics. The politics that we should never play. The religious politics. The religious politics. They didn't want to do certain things because the people was watching. They wanted to hide their, their actual intent. They wanted to hide their uh their their the reality of of what they of who they were they were murderers and they wanted to hide that in from the people um because they knew that the people would 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 kill them um they knew the people would stone them that's what it says in verse twenty Yeah, so um so this is pretty this is pretty this is getting pretty interesting. This is getting pretty heavy too because now we see them getting a little bit more intense. And not only are they getting intense, but they try to deny. Look at verse 28. <laughs> they try to deny what they did. Verse 28 it says saying, "Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name?" And now you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and intend to bring this man's blood on us. You know, what's interesting that it was the priest that said, let this man's blood be on us and our children. That's right. And now they're trying to deny that his blood is on them. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Again, the elevation of Yah and how Yah elevated his son in verse 30. The, the Elohim of our fathers raised up Yahusha, who you slew and hung on a tree. Him have Elohim exalted with his right hand to be a ruler and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So again, we have this distinction in the teaching. 
in the teaching. Remember we were talking about the accurate teaching that, that they had to have faith in. They had to have faith in what was being taught. And there's this constant revelation of Yah exalting his son to his right hand. Yah setting up his son to a position to give us repentance, to give us forgiveness of sins. Um, and in verse 32, well, verse 33, again, that cut to the heart aspect right there. Uh, where it says, when they heard, they were cut, and they took counsel to slay them. Give me one second. I think I'm going to go to Acts chapter 3. I think there was something like that mentioned before. Was it Acts chapter 3 or 2? I think it's either probably Acts chapter 3.13, probably, or, or 2.36. 3.13. Oh, it's 2. Is it Acts chapter 2? 36. Let me see. Yeah, the 37, 37, where it says, and when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. So you see, this is what we were talking about earlier, JP and Kev. Verse 37, it says, this is Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 37, after Paul Peter uh, basically told them that the same thing that he's telling them right now, look at verse 36, 37. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Elohim have made the same Yahusha whom you crucified, both master and Messiah. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, what shall we do? You see the difference? Yeah. And then when we're in Acts chapter five, these dudes is cut to the heart in verse 33, they're cut to the heart, and instead of saying, what can we do to be saved, they're saying, what can we do to kill these dudes? That's crazy. Yeah. Man. It's crazy. So we see that there is, a, there is a conviction, there is a pricking or cutting of the heart, but there still is that choice that the person has to make. That's are true. you going to say, what can I do to be saved, or are you going to say, get out of my face, you know? by any means that's crazy yeah. man. that's crazy but that's the reality Yah is not going to go against his own the free will that he gave to all men he's going to he's going to that free will we have to exercise the will we have to surrender our will this is what Yahushua said he said not my will but thine be done we need to constantly be saying that in our daily lives, we need to, we can't be caught like this, trying to remove the people giving us truth instead of accepting the truth and removing the sin that we have. You see, this is what brings death to a lot of people where people, they, instead of seeing that they have sin and wanting to remove it, they see that they have sin and they want to comfort themselves. They want to make themselves feel better about it. That's a dangerous place right there, man. That's a very dangerous place. Mm. We want to be there, man. I know that. I know. I know that feeling. That's just, just, just. That's the place where no believers wants to be. Right. Where you know what your, you know, when your, the hardness of your heart, when you know you in sin, and you just comfort it, you deny it, you don't want to accept it. That's just. That's not yeah. a good place, man. You know, you gotta be sure we're mindful of that. Uh, absolutely, Kev. I think that I believe that that's the blasphemy of the ruach. When you when you constantly uh, reject something that's being presented to you, and not only that you're rejecting it outwardly, but you're rejecting it inwardly. Like you know that you're convinced that this is true. Remember, remember we was reading this. I'm not sure, but um, remember we were reading um the last couple chapters, I'm not sure if it was chapter three or chapter four, where we read that these dudes knew, they knew that this was the truth and they still rejected it. Um, because it says that they, they knew that no one can do this unless Yah was with them. That's right. And they saw that and instead of accepting it, they said, let's just tell them to stop doing it. 
you know, it's crazy. Um, but just kind of talking about obedience, you know, hmm. the obey factor. That was like, I mean, I've been on this. My grandma mentioned this to me about a year ago, and it just like been sticking with me. Obedience. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, like for the last like four years, I wasn't really focusing on it. But then, you know, I started to see like, you know, I mean, now I'm look. I looked up the word obey, you know, and I found this here in uh, Second Thessalonians, uh, chapter one. I mean, just to kind of get to it, to verse it's chapter one, verse seven. It says, "And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Master Yahusha shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance." On them that know not Elohim and that obey not the gospel of our master, Yahusha Messiah. Like, it's just one, this is only one instance. I mean, we got plenty, you know, of obey you can, we can look at, but just, man, like just obey, you know, it's just amazing. And then we see the Messiah obeying. Through obedience, like we read just in the, uh, I think it's in Hebrews. Was that in Hebrews, maybe? In Hebrews, yeah. That like, he, he learned obedience. He learned death. obedience by the things that he suffered, yeah. Wow. Like, we're to walk as he walked, like it says in First John. You know, walk as he walked. As in, see, First John, which is another one I've been quoting, <laughs> 2, 6, 1 John 2, 6, he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked so if he walked in obedience we got to continue to refresh our mind towards obedience you know absolutely absolutely that's and it says that in verse 30 wait 32 we are witnesses of these things so is also the ruach hakadesh whom elohim have given to them that obey him now we understand what believe actually means. Because it says that we are supposed to believe and he will give us the gift of the Ruach. Wow. So now when you combine this statement and the other statement that Peter mentioned, obedience is incorporated in belief and you cannot receive the Ruach unless your heart is, is dedicated to obey his word. Wow. Yeah, it's it's going to say it again. I want to, let's read the last. So anybody want to read the last uh, verses, verse 33 to 42? Yeah, I'll read it. All right. Here we go, JP. Say it again. It don't matter. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. You want me to read it? I'll read it. I'm always willing to read, you know. I read, brother. All, All right. right. It says in, uh, starting in, uh, 34, right? Uh, 30, 33. Yeah, 34, okay. 34. Sorry, yeah, 34. 534. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of Elohim, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against Elohim. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yahusha and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house.
house, they cease not to teach and preach Yahushua Messiah. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. I love that. Uh, this is it, it's, it's amazing, man. And I'm sorry, brother. It's just amazing. I, when I read this, I was just like, what? What you know? What I mean, of course, you know from that portion of Gamaliel speaking, that's amazing. He, with his wisdom for Elohim, he was like, even though he was a Pharisee and all, he had the wisdom to say, "Look, we've seen the example here. Let's not go and and mess with unless you want to fight with Elohim now. Come on, like right." And we see today, like the God, the, this word is still preached. It's still preached. I mean, how can you not see that as an example? You know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. I just want to throw this verse because verse 41, man. I, I just, I told my, we, when I read this, I'm like, yeah. in verse 41, it says, and they departed from the presence of the council and rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for mm. his name. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. It's amazing. That that characteristic, that's Yahusha's part. That's his ruach. That's right. it. There, what, what does it say in Philippians 2? Let this mind be in you that was also in the Messiah, mm -hmm. that he took on himself no reputation. Like, yeah. this is what happens. When you get reprimanded and beaten by the Sanhedrin, people are going to look at you like, oh, man, look at this man. He is the, he is the worst. What did he do? And they were like rejoicing, saying, whatever. <laughs> that yeah. we, this happened because we are with Yah and his son. Uh, this, is, this is the best place to be. This is the best place to be. And then it says, daily in the temple, in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Yahushua the Messiah. Yeah. That's when you really have the Ruah. That's when you were really led by the Spirit. Because when you live by the spirit, you know that you're in the right path. You know who you're following. Right. You know who is in the wrong and you know who is in the right. You know who, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you are when you are led by the by the ruah, you're confident. It kind of reminds me when I was I always bring that, you know, because that scripture right there when it says um, um verse 39, it says, um, uh, no, verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if this counsel of for if this counsel or this work be of man, it will come to naught. But if it be of Elohim, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found in to fight against Elohim. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. That is the same scripture that I, I shared with my pastor when I was in the church. <laughs> that same scripture, that same scripture, that same script is the same one that I shared with my pastor. Ooh. Because I knew, I knew I was walking in the spirit. So no matter who is in position of leadership, no matter who's leading, when you want the spirit of Yah, you just know, you just know that you're going on the right path. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a confident spirit, it's a sure spirit. It cannot lead you to any other way but to do the truth. And I just remember when I share that. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's of Yahuwah, man, you can't stop it. You can't stop it, man. It's a powerful scripture. Especially when your lifestyle is lining up with your understanding of scripture. As if you're teaching and it's like without a shadow of a doubt, accurate and true, there's nothing else to do but to stand on it no matter the consequences. You see what I'm saying? This is what I was talking about before. Right now, you have a lot of people there in different places understanding different things. But nobody's really, you know, these things that's happening, these are things that we're looking into. We're not, like, willing to die for these things yet. But there's a lot of, there's some solidified understanding of certain scriptures, certain teachings that we're not going to move. You know, there's a root. Who is Yah? Who is his son? How do you obey? What do you obey? The Torah. You see what I'm saying? There's a, there's a foundation that all of those things are built on. That, that, that is what they're going to bring you to death about. You see, they're not coming to him 
And they're, they're saying, look at it, it says, it says that they cease not to teach and preach Yahusha the Messiah. That means that they're going through the scriptures and revealing who Yahusha is. This is the foundation and the root of what we need to stand on. And they're telling them, stop teaching about Yahusha. We can't. This is what we this is what we are building ourselves to die for. They're going to they're tell you to stop. They're going to say that the foundational aspect of his truth is error and you need to stop. You see what I'm saying? Torah is 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 done away with. Who Yahusha is is like up in the air. Everybody has these things, but that's not it wasn't like that for what they for them. It wasn't like that for them. They knew exactly because they were witnesses to it. They knew what they were teaching. And it's all in the same scripture that we have. You see what I'm saying? So to, there's nothing else to do but, to, and listen, being beaten at this time, there was a rule that you will be whipped 39 times. Not with no little... Man. And the shame that they had to feel, they had to be, this This had to happen in front of everybody. This wasn't like, like you, you get punched in the stomach, you know, like them, them little movies where you get punched in the stomach and then they walk away and leave you on the floor. No, they, they spread you out. They hold your hands and legs out and they whip you behind with a thick, a thick whip, like 39 times. Yeah. I think they call it 40 minus one. 39 times. Paul even said that he was whipped 39 times as well. You know, this was the normal thing that this these group of leaders did to those who were going against them. You know what I mean? Wow. Hmm. So to, to no rejoice That's after nothing. that? Whew. <laughs> 39 times. I'm like, I'm like, what? Like... Man, we got some things coming. You know, wow, that's that's amazing. You know what? Um, no, because I had like a little note. You know, it's interesting. Um, we go to Acts twenty-two, uh, verse three. Speaking of Paul. It says, I'm verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, you know, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was a zealous, was zealous toward Elohim as we all are this day. But then we see Gamaliel, the same person that Paul was under. Right. He's, it's like... I don't know how to take it. You know, I don't know if it's like, like this was, I mean, I feel, I mean, I, the only way I can say is Elohim is, was just like in this work. It was just, oh, there's some connection there. I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with, you know what I mean? Gamma, Gamma Leo was trying to do what y'all wanted him to do here. Here's why. And where, where is it? So Acts chapter five, Gamma Leo starts to, starts to speak right right in verse in verse 36 it says of 35 and 36 it says you men of israel take heed concern to yourselves like make sure you examine yourself <laughs> that's wisdom make sure you examine yourself what you intend right. to do concerning these guys then he started bringing in examples a lot of people came in and it came to nothing. Right. Another person, Judas of Galilee, came in, and it came to nothing. And then in verse 38, now I say to you, stop. Stop coming at these men. Leave them alone. Because if this mm. teaching or this work is of men, it's going to end up doing. See, that, that mindset. Obviously, Paul didn't really take that mindset because Paul went in, started killing, throwing dudes in jail. You see what I'm saying? Right. 
So right. this man was trying to keep the Torah perfectly. And I can't, I can't even say that this man didn't listen to Paul's teaching. Like when Paul was converted, came back to his math, you know, his teacher and was like, yo, you know, look at this. You know what I mean? I, I can't, especially since he mentioned it in Acts, which is Acts 22. For the, yeah, fact that, yeah, 22. for the fact that he mentioned it, I believe it has something to do with other people knowing him too. You know, other people knowing yeah. how high regard, where, where does it say? Oh, verse 34, Acts chapter five, it says, then stood up one of in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, mm -hmm. a doctor of the Torah, and had a reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth in a little space. So, oh, snap, I didn't even see wow. that. So he had the apostles and he told them to put them, put them in a, in, a, in a room by themselves for a little while. And he was known, he was like a man, of, a renowned man of wisdom of the Torah. So I could see Yah wanting, just like how Yah tried to use Nicodemus to, to try to um, approach uh, the priests about the, that, that, that council that they had about Messiah that illegal, that unlawful counsel that they had. And Nicodemus was like, hey, we're not supposed to be having this yeah. counsel. You see what I'm saying? He tried to, he tried to bring them back to Torah. And they were like, oh, so you're, you're his follower too? And he was just like, nah, 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 I'm not his follower. But you see like these little things, Pilate was trying to let him off, try to let him, let him go. Even Pilate's wife had a dream. Right. You see, so now yeah. we have Gamaliel, like a man of reputation, a doctor saying, chill, like, leave these men alone. So it's like constantly Yah inspiring somebody to speak out on, 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 on their behalf. Yeah, my internet went, went. Yeah, you, yeah. Went. you, you got froze on spite. In spite, that was it. <laughs> it. I'm not taking it back. <laughs> yeah. In spite. Gamaliel was, 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 Yah was constantly calling people to, to rise up and speak for his people, even though they were not directly connected. You know what I mean? So right now, that's that's how I'm looking at this. Like right. Lil is like a famous, renowned, yeah. understanding the Torah, and he's telling them, leave them alone. If it's from Yah, you're going to be fighting with Yah. And I can see Gamaliel like, yo, I'm not even going to mess with this. But I can, I can, you know, I, I, I try to use my imagination as close to the scriptures as possible. For the fact that this is Paul's teacher, you know, I can't see Paul being as bold as he is, not going to Gamaliel. I can't see him doing that. This dude was in front of kings talking about, yeah, let's right, send, right. send me to Caesar. <laughs> don't I don't want you to let me go. You send me yeah. to Caesar. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was thrown in jail. And he was like, they said, okay, you can go. He's like, no, I'm not going nowhere. Tell the captain of the jail to come down here now. Like, this is Paul. So I can't imagine him not going to a person that he respected to tell about the gospel. I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised uh, if Gamaliel, no. I, was, I won't be surprised if he accepted the Shia. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I may not say it there, but I won't be surprised because a lot of things were not said. But I won't be surprised. Right. Now, for, for today's application, I was thinking, you know, and, and I would like to say, you know, for today's application for me, the way I was seeing it is not to go and, and be um, maybe so hard on some of these pastors out here, some of these teachers in the sense, like not to go at them and start trying to 
tell them you're, you're teaching this, you're doing this and that, that, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't, I, I'm making a call right there. I'm making a, a, a judgment call to say, I'm making a call and saying, oh, he's teaching the true, uh, false doctrine or whatever, you know, in that sort of sense. I know there are some like that are way out onto the far left, like they're just, you know, but, but like what, what Gamaleo is saying, and I believe that, you know, it's, it's him saying like, we need to give them this. If, if this is of Yah, like, who are you to say? Now, it would probably be my better position to go to some of the people that are being taught what they're teaching and ask them questions maybe or something. I don't know. You know, what are you guys thinking about, you know, like in that sense of today's application as far as, because I see a lot of people on YouTube, um, you know, making these videos and they're yelling at people, they're yelling at pastors, they're talking bad about them. And a lot of those pastors, yeah, they, they probably are saying some awkward stuff that are awful, but, you know, I don't know, you know. Like, there's no, what's the point? Like, if I'm not talking to them, what I need to be talking about them for? Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, when I, make, when I make studies, it's like about the topic. It's not about what another person mentions about the topic. And that's what I'm starting to see a lot, too. I'm starting to see people... Like they're making studies based off of what somebody else said wrong. Right. And I'm just like, you don't have to do it. Just teach the right thing. Just teach the right thing and keep on teaching it. And that's it. You see what I'm saying? But what the focus is being diverted. This is why I don't believe that a lot of these YouTube videos is inspired by Yah because they're based off of what other people are doing wrong. And now they're here to bring the light for everyone to shine. Like, nah, just teach the truth the way that you feel Yah is showing you and let people hear it. Let people hear it like that. Don't let people yeah. say, oh, uh, Christianity and, and uh, this thing over here. Like, you don't have to do it unless you're directly, there's something specific that you're directly uh, 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 talking about. Because if a lot of these... Right. A lot of these bashing is usually a general thing that you can apply to multiple different groups. You know what I mean? Like, oh, right. the Christianity, they didn't do this. But yeah, the, but people who follow Torah, they do some other crazy stuff too. You know what I mean? Sure. So don't, don't, unless you're going to talk directly to them, there's no point to put that in your study. Like, let the study be about whatever it's talking about. And if a, <laughs> if a point yeah. comes up, Mention the point, go back, you know, go back on. But um, even, even the way that, that they approach the leaders, right? You have the disciples. The disciples are telling them the gospel, telling them, listen, this is, this is the Messiah who you crucified, whom Elohim is raising them up to forgive your sins. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He's giving them, he's not bringing it up to show them, how horrible they are. He's bringing it up to show them that they have a way in. You see what I'm saying? If I'm going to say, um, you guys, you guys killed Jehusha. And then that's it. You wow. guys are horrible. You guys killed Yahusha. What's the purpose? What's the purpose of that? That's not even how Yahuwah Yahu does things. When he comes to Israel and say, you guys will be punished because of this. And then he turns around and says a, a comforting thing to bring you in. But if you turn right. from your ways and listen to me and hearken unto my voice and to keep my commandments, then I will bless you. You see what I'm saying? What we need to know, what we need to learn how to do is to if we're going to address a situation, address it the way that Yahuwah addresses it with, with an opening to bring them to you, to bring them, to let them hear your heart and bring them to you so you can embrace them. Don't say something to keep them over there separate and, and talk negative. If you're going to speak negative about an issue, speak negative about an issue so you can bring the person in as well. You know what I mean? I think that's what's lacking. That's what's lacking is where's that opening for me to, to be embraced by you? You're not, you're not giving me an opportunity to be embraced by you. You just, 
b- b- beating me down to the point where if you can slay me legally, you would have. Right. No doubt. No doubt, man. I mean, and just going, you know, and, and so that was something that's amazing. And then, I mean, going back to that verse in 31, it's, it's interesting. It says, him that Elohim exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Like you just said, you know, it's like he, he was given to, for, to give repentance to Israel. Right. Like, and I was just thinking about that, like, wow, like it was and forgiveness of sins, you know, all these, and all these times before that they were having to go to the temple do their sacrifices, constantly doing it like that, and find and here's this. It's like a, like all that was done for that foreshadow, and here we go, boom. You got this for this complete right here. He's right. completed it. You know, now this is done. Repentance. All right. of this, exactly what you said. The temple and the sacrifices and all of this represented this, right? And this is now here in its fulfillment to still give you repentance and to still forgive you because they were being forgiven before but he said now this is a fulfillment to still offer you this repentance and you do and look at verse 30 look at verse 30 you're the one who killed them you're right this is elohim our fathers raised up yahusha whom you killed and held in a tree him have Elohim exalted with the right hand to be a prince and a savior to give repentance to you Man. and to forgive your sins. That's crazy. That's wow. crazy. You see what I'm saying? But a lot of people, they're like, oh, no, they were being, they were being rough and harsh. He was preaching that brimstone. No, he wasn't. He was preaching, turn from your ways and come. Right. He's calling you back. He's right. calling you back, and you the one that killed him. Wow. It's crazy these people want to want to condemn. These people, it's like that fleshly desire rises up, and they just, they get a, they get a, a fix from just telling somebody how wicked and wrong they are, raising their voice and, and condemning and bringing somebody down. They get that, that fleshly satisfaction. But then they don't say, I love you, brother. Come back. Come back from all of that wickedness. They don't say that. Right. And if you don't say that part, then you're not teaching the gospel. You're teaching hate. Exactly. That's, that's key. You know, um, you know, by the fruit you shall know them. It's, it's, um, we always, this is why it's important for us to really pay attention to the way the Messiah, <clears throat> the Messiah spoke, <clears throat> the way he preached the gospel. That's why I'm going through the gospel because I really want to pay attention to how the Messiah spoke. You know, what are the words that he used when it came to reaching out to the people? You you was always turn, turn from your ways and then repent for the kingdom of Yah is here and come, you know, turn, turn around. (coughs) So it's key that, um, you know, that we understand that, that we see the difference when we see a lot of people talking about hatred and, you know, the, you know, the gospel is only for the, you know, for the Israelites. That's not, that's not, you know what I'm saying? We have to know the word. Right. So I mean, it's key that we understand what the word is saying, that Yahusha did, came. He came for his people, right. but at the same time to bring light, you know, to be a light to the world. And he was always about repentance. Always. Look at John the Baptist about repentance, turning your ways. All man. And that's the gospel. I want to point out these two verses. Exactly what Kepha was saying, but what we were also talking about, uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, and then I'm going to stop the recording after this, after these two verses, unless you guys have, have, have a, something to, to mention. So, um, Ezekiel chapter 18, uh, verse 23, <clears throat> verse 23, it says, have I any pleasure at all? that the wicked should die, saith Yah Elohim. Not that he should return from his ways and live. Like, do I have pleasure at all? At all. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, see, this is the, this is the thing that people they don't they don't like because it, it goes against it, it makes you to fight against that that anger and bitterness that's in your flesh instead of letting it out because and then blaming Yahusha. Oh, he did this too. Oh, John the Baptist did this too. Oh, these guys did this too. No, worry about who you are. You're not qualified. You see what I'm saying? I'm not qualified. I know if I let that thing go, it's going all the way. That thing, I have to tame it and give it to y'all. I have to. If I let that anger come out of me and it turns physical, it's going all the way. You see what I'm saying? Look at, look at what it says here in Ezekiel 18. Look at the oh, desire yeah. that Yah has for man. Um, verse, start, I'm going to read from wow. verse 27 down, right? It says again, when the wicked turn away from his wickedness that he committed and does that which is lawful and right. So you see the obedience there that you was mentioning, JP. Yeah. Does that which is lawful. <laughs> Go back to the Torah. He shall save his soul alive because he considered and turned away from all his transgressions that he have committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, not yet saith Yah, yet saith the house of Israel, the way of Yah is not equal, O house of Israel. Are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith Yah Elohim. Repent. You see that? She talks about judgment <laughs> and goes right into the open door. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so the iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed. Make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. Saith Yah Elohim, wherefore turn and live. Wow, that's Amazing. a great that's a great scripture, man. That's a great scripture to uh, to preach the gospel. Absolutely, there's never a way. Yeah. With this, you can never be confused of how he's doing anything throughout the scripture. He's always doing it this way, even with Ananias and Sapphira, he did it this way with them. He brought to them the conviction in their heart. They were pricked in their heart. They knew what they shouldn't have done. That's why Peter let his wife get another chance. Well, not Peter, but Yah. Yah told Peter, give him another, ask his wife. Gave her an opportunity to, because you know, sometimes when you, you know, like Achan, Achan and his whole family, because they, they held on to the transgression together. But you see here, he's trying to divide the transgression from the house. He doesn't want a whole house to be destroyed. So he offers you an opportunity to tell the truth. He offers you an opportunity to turn from your ways. You know, he had that opportunity. Ezekiel 18 was right for them, was for Ananias and Sapphira. The, it was, Ezekiel 18 was for the Pharisees that, that Peter and John was talking to. This is what Yah was telling them. Turn from your ways and receive the sacrifice, my son, that was given for you and live. But they chose. They chose not to. So, yeah, this is the end of uh, Acts chapter 5. Shalom.